clothing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. So, <laughs> so I'm chatting, and it's not a good look for me. <laughs> uh, okay, so we are live. I'm Dylan Panko of Bluebird Adventures. Uh, we just finished a trip with Opus Trailers. Uh, the, what was it? What are we calling it? The the West Coast Opus uh, Adventure Trail or uh, Run? Um, yeah. Where we had uh, eight different rigs, so truck eight different trucks with tra uh, Opus trailers from uh, Opus Light to Opus Two and Opus Four. Uh, we had such Adam had spent the, so much time planning this out and getting enough people that Opus actually sent a film crew with us to join us. So um, tonight you're going to be seeing what Adam and others have the photographs and videos we've taken. Uh, and, but we are very excited to see some of the juicy stuff that Black Elf Media has got. So. Um, Adam, you want to kind of spend a moment just kind of saying uh, just to what, what we did? Yeah, so basically we all met um, at Idlewild Campground in Oregon. Um, some, some people had kind of traveled together for a few days before that. Um, and we had traveled together with a couple others, Dylan and TH. Um, and Joe was with Matt, and I don't know if you were with Carlos for part of that. So it was just you and Matt yeah. and your guys' wives. So basically everybody had met um, at Idlewell Campground on – what day was that? I don't even remember what day that was now. Sunday. Can I back you up Sunday. a little bit, Adam? I, I'd like to know, like, where – what portion – like, I'm from Windsor, California. What portion are mm -hmm. you – where are you from? Joe, where are you from? Pepper obviously lives with me. I'm in the Bay Area, in Pinole. Okay, and Joe, where are you from? I'm up in, I live up in the Seattle area. I'm originally from Southern California, but I've lived up here in the Seattle area long enough, probably more than uh, more than half my life, so I guess I'm in Seattle. Area. And which Opus are you, do you own? I own the OP4, it's the uh, four slash six person sleeper. Okay, and then I'll let TH kind of. So TH and Lisa, my <laughs> lovely, beautiful wife, we're from uh, Southern California. I have an OP4 slash six as well. Cool. So I did snap. Uh, so we actually, before we met up with uh, the group, um, Adam, uh, TH, and Pepper and myself, we had a night to meet up and then we started to head up. And one of the pictures that I had captured, captured was this one right here. So we got our Chevy, we've got TH's Dodge, and then Adam's uh, GMC. And oh, you can see over the top of all the trailers behind it's a fifth wheel trailer <laughs> you can see how much smaller these opuses are but when you open them up which is extremely easy and awesome um you have lots of space and very, it's very grand and very nice but i thought this was a great contrast picture to show i forget this is where we were looking for an air mattress i forget what town this that is, was in. Uh, bernie okay there you go bernie california well, thanks for the help there. And we get way better mileage than that fifth wheel <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 we actually Yet they, they are cool. And the uh, we actually, speaking of mileage, we actually got a 17 MPG average over the entire trip of 1,400 miles. So okay, we, Mr. Diesel, we get it. You get great mileage. Yeah. I got more like 10. <laughs> <laughs> the significance for me, though, would be the aerodynamic that it was. It, we usually tow a box trailer that has a, a V front end, and that V is just so much wind drag, it's ridiculous. So having this, uh, th this is our Chevy in the front, and it's about the, the Opus Light is about the same height as our tailgate, and you just don't even know it's back there until you look in the rear view and you see this only the spare tire. <laughs> uh, here's another shot, but from the front. The, so again, Adam's GMC, TH's Dodge, and our Chevy from the exact same parking lot. Just had to show off our trucks. We're really proud of our rigs. <laughs> yeah, that was when we were all craving McDonald's and they wouldn't let us in. Oh, yeah, they want to order via app, and it didn't work. <laughs> Hello, X Country. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate that. Um, so, oops, let's see your slideshow capture. So, we we're, were just you were just talking about the campground that we were met up in, Adam, uh, and I've got a picture up right now where I'm topping off our fresh water tank. So, I'll let you continue. We did have a meet up there, like a meet and greet. You also had a giveaway uh, and so on. So, if you want to pick back up, that'd be great. Okay. So yeah, we had all met up um, at Idlewild. Uh, we didn't get there until probably close to 530, but I think most everybody um, had beat us there other than the film crew. Um, 
so yeah, we met up and, and Opus was very generous with the giveaways. Um, we had solar panel, we had air awnings, we had wind brakes, stickers, t-shirts, koozies. I can't even remember all the stuff that uh, Opus Wait, provided. Wait, someone got a jacuzzi? <laughs> no, koozie. Oh, Beer koozie. koozie. I was like, where yeah. did I go for that? No. You didn't get Opus the hot tub attachment for Opus? No! <laughs> oh, Black Elk Media is watching. Hi, guys. Oh, cool. Hey, hey. Hello there. Um, so, so, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Then we kind of... So after we kind of settled in and um, we got our camp set up, um, we had did the giveaways and got to kind of meet everybody and, and gather around and, and have a nice visit. Um, and then basically from there, we, we went to bed. It was long days. Um, and then got up the next morning and we had kind of a, a driver's meeting um, to go over uh, communications and maps and uh, talking with the media a little bit, media crew, um, about what, what they were looking for um, and shots. And by the way, those guys were great to work with. Um, <laughs> yeah. They were awesome. You guys were awesome to work Just with. One. Um, yeah, yeah for sure. Especially after driving in a car for 20 hours. You guys were really accommodating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you yeah. were talking about being in the back, TH. They were in the back behind you for a good portion oh, yeah. also. Yeah. Um, so I have a picture up right now of all the trailers all lined up. I thought that was a fantastic shot where you, all, you can see the opus on each one of them. Um, that was a great time. Uh, and, yeah, this was just the beginning. At this point, I think we had driven already like six or 700 miles. And this was like Adam, Adam Charmaine, TH, and mine, what, like second or third day at this point? I think second. Second, yeah, well, I, I don't know. That was his second, second week, wasn't it, Joe? It was. I, 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 I had the proud distinction of being the dirtiest tire cover in this photo. <laughs> yeah. The one that looks more like, you know, milk chocolate, milk, like. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's our trailer. Opus is the same color. Yep. So we did capture. Uh, so after this, we did. Uh, this is where we started our journey as a group. Um, we did actually capture us all pulling out, and uh, Pepper was able to capture the top of them and copy it, or cut it down right before we came in this live stream. Uh, so this would be like... Y'all just gonna keep on going, okay? There's a price to pay to be cameraman. <laughs> hey, it's a small price to pay to go along on the trip. We, we Pe Pepper and I were lucky enough to be invited by Adam, uh, who worked with Opus to provide us with an Opie light to tow along for the ride and enjoy. And basically, we were asked to capture as many moments as we could on audio, video, and still images, and we did as much as we possibly could. I hope we followed through. We'll know pretty soon when Chelsea gets back from vacation. What channel are you going to post Opus's Gone Wild? <laughs> We're going to start another Opus channel, actually. I don't want to flood this channel too, with too much Opus. Um, so they said, Black Elk says the trucks are so clean. Yeah, we hadn't hit the dirt quite yet. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going to be starting another channel to, for more Opus content pretty soon. So if you do want to follow us for content, stay tuned. We will be announcing that pretty soon. Um, and then... That's, I'm trying to look for a picture when we here's so uh, just after we pulled off the the pavement I've got a picture up now we're all along the side of the road uh, airing down um, I don't know again you guys can jump in at any time and feel free so to interrupt was it me the, was it the black elk guys Dylan that made a comment about the trucks being so clean yeah that's correct they are because they're the only ones I know that show up with what looks like a freshly washed and waxed van to go off roading in yeah but who's the one who showed up with a bottle of spray wax yeah. <laughs> 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 what is what was what was Pepper's comment? It's the men in black, or that was Char, the men in black vehicle. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, the G-Man van. G-Man van. Man. There you go. Uh, we have some a video here of them driving by us. Here's a picture, a video of their van. Yeah, 
I was extremely impressed because when I first saw their hitch in the back of that van, I went, oh boy. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> like, our death tank is, is low to the ground, and I was concerned, but uh, when I saw that, I went, uh oh, good thing we've all got scrap and chain because this is going to get interesting. <laughs> Did you see the yeah. quality of that camera technique as he passed by? Camera hanging low out the door, no dust. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. It keeps my lens clean on my S20. They're so hard to keep clean. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this was a great portion to where we just got a chance the kids got a chance to kind of get dusty and dirty. And, uh, it was kind of noisy hearing all the tires going shh all at the same time, but, uh, definitely makes a big difference on your ride quality. We didn't air down our Opus, uh, trailer cause we can't air down our truck tires. I don't know if one of you guys did air down your tires and has some comment on, does it help, uh, airing down your tires or is it a hindrance? Does somebody want to comment on that one? Oh, on the on the opus but adam were you it, gonna it, say something or jump yeah it, it it makes a world of difference um airing down i normally unless there's a lot of washboarding going on i don't air down the uh tires on the trailer or if it's going to be you know real rocky but um on a trip this long off-road uh it was definitely worth airing down all six tires <laughs> um so yeah, yeah it, it makes a huge difference. It's it's definitely uh it's definitely situational. In in the, you do it for one of two reasons. Either you're you're trying to protect your vehicles or your trailer or or you're trying to improve your ride comfort. And in this trip, I think it was mostly about ride comfort. There was enough washboarding and whatnot that it you know, you just you just wanted to make all your, your occupants in your vehicles as, as happy as possible. So like soften the the blow of the bumps for them. Um, there were moments where there was some rocks that, you know, you know, you, you had to pick the right line and, and otherwise you might, you know, risk uh, some, some damage to your sidewall. And if you're not aired down, then that increases your risk of something, something bad happening for sure. But I'll tell you what, I have been in situations where like uh, we didn't have it on this trip, but like on the beach, for example, I, I absolutely can tell the difference between being aired uh not aired down versus aired down like uh with the trailer you take a trailer on the beach and you're not aired down you're like guaranteed to bog yourself in the sand mm -hmm. um and I, and I i did that like on purpose just to like experiment with like what the difference in effect is and and absolutely like airing down is the way what you need to do to keep yourself like going on that kind of terrain so it's yeah anyways definitely valuable for us, we yeah. also, because our, our tires are highway terrains, so we, we're not supposed to air them down. But generally speaking, we tow a 6x10 box trailer that has leaf springs and just regular old trailer tires. And dragging that thing around in the forest, I mean, it's a big improvement between a tent and, like, sleeping on the ground and sleeping in the trailer. It's worth it to drag the trailer. But, boy, when you hit a bump, you can just feel the whole thing bounce off the ground and it pulls back on the truck. And, oh, it's miserable. So for us to go from that to independent suspension with shocks and big tires night and day oh man yeah. and then to have trailer brakes too we don't have trailer brakes we've had situations before where we're driving uh, on a muddy trail going downhill and the trailer's so heavy it's trying to jackknife us going down the hill with the opus i can hit the trailer brake slide and i can pull myself straight i could go on and on about the opus i'm just so excited to be working with them and <laughs> i hope that we can keep this going um so yeah, what do we got for our next picture here? Um, that's another picture of a, this is the side looking through from the driver's seat, looking out my side view um, at all the vehicles behind us. And what a sight to see with this whole group. The other thing that really struck me uh, as awesome was that Adam somehow worked out to get everybody together that all seemed to click really well. We all seemed to get along really well. The kids all got along well. Uh, dogs, I wasn't really a part of that, so I'm not going to comment. I'll let them comment on their own because they already tried to chime in once. Um, but that was a fantastic time, and I, I look forward to doing this with great anticipation again. Um, I'm going to put Dylan in the back of the line next time then so he can eat all the dust and see if his opinion is still the same. There you go. And also, <laughs> that way Black Elk can also get better video of me banging out my air filter because they did get Dude, that. that was awesome. If you guys are watching, I'm still waiting to better. see that. My The drone shot you got of our truck out on the cliff there, like that I was really it, nervous. It to... hit, 
Yeah, hint, hint, exactly. I sent you guys an email, by the way, about your tripod. I still have it, so check your email. Blah blah blah. Um, so yeah, I was I was super happy with the with the team that came along, um, and it seemed like everybody was was more than willing to work with the film crew um, and do the interviews and things like that, which makes it just that much better of a of a film for them um it just makes it easier uh to document some of the stuff that we were doing and, and get those interviews but aside from that just everybody that was on the trip was super fun to hang out with the chat with um i hadn't met any of you guys personally other than dylan and pepper before this trip and i would definitely do it again with everybody that was on that mm -hmm. trip i wouldn't i wouldn't uh, hesitate to do it with the same crew it was it was awesome absolutely i completely agree <laughs> although th Sweet. sometimes we had to put the sensor bar across you but that's okay <laughs> yeah. we like it spicy <laughs> yeah, just a filter. Uh, just I yeah i got ostracized to the adult <laughs> Even. Like everybody personalizes their rig and seeing some of the modifications they make to their own personal choice was pretty cool. Like really like excited. this guy here that we have on the on the screen right now? This this guy had done a couple yeah. of modifications. Hey. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. Oh, he's actually Thanks. in the back of the truck. I just noticed. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad. I came back and these guys, I spent more money on the trailer. No, it's, it's, the nice thing about it is it is an extensible platform. And, you know, one of the, if you look at the back of mine, one of the first things I did was pull off the factory rack and put a rhino rack on for a couple reasons. One, a lot lighter. And I can get one. TH, we just lost your audio there for a moment. Is it back? Yeah, Better? it's back. Yeah, there you go. No, yeah. so we did. So we did a Rhino rack, no plug. But um, the nice thing was, you can actually adjust your payload depending on the trip. So I have kayak carriers, I have a bike carrier. So depending, like on this one, was extra water, extra fuel, a roam box, and then the hot shower. And next time, I might take a couple of those off and switch it around. And thanks to Joe, we got my hot water working because I had it plugged into the wrong plug. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, by the I, by the year, by the time you guys had taken off, I don't think I think it was another day or two until Pepper and I got a chance to shower in Adam's Opus too, because our Opus Light doesn't have a water heater, so we had to we had to beg and barter. Please let me take a shower. It's been like a week. <laughs> they didn't mind at all. They were very no. kind. Yes, they were. Survive. I'm being, we were just more. testing our limits. I can't. I'm being dramatic. <laughs> But yeah, TH, you've got quite the rig going here with the onboard air, your second refrigerator, your containers. And then when I needed that torque socket to get my air cleaner, air filter out, you just happened to have one. So I thank you for carrying all that gear. So yeah, that I think that was my big learning experience on this trip. I think I definitely carried way too much because um, what you don't see with me blocking the back of the truck is I'm blocking two six-foot toolboxes that pretty much had sockets and wrenches and everything. So if someone broke down on the recovery gear, so my weight was way heavier than I normally tow. So it kind of changed the whole, you know, as Adam and Joe were talking about airing down, I only went down to 20 PSI. So it still rode really well, but there was so much weight to it. It planted itself on the road really nicely. But you were the only one to do that hill climb at that like rock quarry spot we stayed at. <laughs> Uh, I think someone else wanted to do it, but I don't think the wife and kids were into it. I wanted to do it. I just was worried I was going to break my truck. <laughs> yeah, the, the nice thing about that little hill climb was the 20 miles of range I lost gunning it to go up the, <laughs> you know, 155 to start. When I get to the top of the hill, it's down to 110. <laughs> this thing runs on money anyway. It's just so yeah. Much crazy, you, don't, right? you don't buy this for mileage. Let's be clear. Yeah. But no. no, it was, it, 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 you know, it, it, it's a little bigger, so I can't go places where some of the other guys can, but 
it's great to have tools and stuff in case something breaks, which we were lucky. I don't think, I think only one person was having a lighting problem on their trailer because they replaced their plug. But other than that, no one had problems. I don't think anyone leaked water or. Mm -mm. No, it was all yeah. good except for cleaning out air filters and then you have and yours completely plugged on the way home. <laughs> we'll save that for another story. <laughs> yeah, the fires kind of sucked. <laughs> Yeah, I put a little damper in things. We had a little smoke on the last night, too. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. So, Actually, I, Adam did a really good job routing us around smoke, to be honest. We saw it. Uh, yeah. You know, as we were driving up, we saw the plumes. We saw the various fires. But once we got up there, it was clear. That, that was all planned, by the way. Oh, was that, <laughs> was that you with the big blower? The bellows. Yeah, <laughs> the bellows yeah. blowing the air. He's <laughs> like, I know a guy. <laughs> yeah. No, I had, I had, I mean, this route was kind of set in stone. It just, we were very fortunate that the winds kind of, especially that, that, uh, our second, uh, campsite on the trail, the winds kind of shifted and started blowing out of the Northwest and it pushed almost all the smoke from that, the bootleg fire, uh, down by upper Klamath Lake pushed it South. So we had pretty clear skies for the most part. So. Yeah, it Adam, worked out well. Adam, I have uh, Gaia open. How do I show the ascent and descent? Is that easy to switch on or off? Um, Can you see that on the screen? Can't see it well enough to. That's ah, okay. Don't worry about Can it. Can you, uh, if yeah. you click on the trail itself, I think there is like a. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Done. <laughs> yeah. Done. So okay. eleven thousand two hundred thirty-eight feet of ascent, max elevation of five thousand or six thousand five hundred twenty-seven feet. Was that was probably at the cliff spot, yeah? Well, yeah. Adam I think... kept saying, "Oh, it's all downhill the rest of the way." <laughs> or was that the fire lookout? <laughs> I think that was probably the fire lookout. All I right. think that was our highest point of elevation. Was was at that point. So we do um, have. Uh... This live stream that I managed to capture uh, from the fire lookout, which I have to make or let everybody know that I misspeak in this video. I say it's the tallest structure you can legally live in. It's the tallest wooden structure you can legally live in in North America. All right. Hello. We made it to the yeah, top. I didn't think I was actually going to be able to climb all the way up here, but we're at uh, Wolf Mountain Fire Lookout, the tallest yeah, you structure can you can legally some, live in. Movement, Check this view out as I... You can, you can feel a little bit Look at this. Just a little bit of rocking back and forth. Even with the guy wires. That's our truck down there. Yeah. <laughs> so far down. I think that was built after Dylan sent me All down. the Opus trailers kind of encompassing the whole thing. <laughs> he kept saying you could bring the kids up and yeah, whatnot. Did you want to go by me? I had no problem bringing the kids up. But yeah, look at that view. Jump, Talk about jump. sketchy. <laughs> this guy lives up here. I don't know how long, like nine weeks at a time. He's yeah. here till October. And for step, Bill. Say hi, Adam. We're live on YouTube. Oh, I mean Facebook. Awesome. Very big yeah. thing for me. It's a pretty cool spot. Yeah, I was super proud that you went He said it's the, the tallest structure you can legally live in in North America? I think, or maybe the continent. Dang. But not at all. I was saying, I'll bet it's quite something in the wind. But apparently it's not. going up. But I got the film crew over there. I go inside in just a moment. And the view this hey, has is absolutely Pepper's amazing. down there. I was exchanging texts with him today. He was uh, say hi to Facebook. To the, the live stream, but he uh, has astronomy class tonight. So anyway, they I didn't think I was yesterday. By the way, <laughs> I didn't think I was going to make this climb up. It's a long way and it's super high. I had to hold on to the wire the whole way. Uh, I'm not keen on heights whatsoever. Oh. That's what I use the drone for. Are you going to send him cookies or something? Or uh, yeah, Let me take you inside. Hold on. So, let's go check it out. Come on. But yeah, forgive me as I take my time my and hold on to this handrail. I appreciate it. And knock oh, this stuff there's over. There's me knocking his dishes over. <laughs> you know, the first thing you have to check is what pictures he put on it. Yeah, right? Is <laughs> 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 on the phone? <laughs> All right, we're going yeah. around into yeah, the inside. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was Joe. I just walked by him. So we'll just show a little bit more of this, and then I'll show the stairs. Oh, yeah. 
Very cool. No, yeah, this is really cool. This is called a viewshed map. That's Basically, everything on this map, like uh, all the red areas, uh -huh. are areas where I can see the ground. And the green areas are where I can't see the ground. Which means if I see a smoke popping up behind a ridge, that means that I know it's in one of these green areas. Okay. No, yeah, it's uh, really, really helpful. <laughs> Can you get this like rifle scope thing? So you can, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you can't really see through much, you know, see much right now um, because it's just so hazy out today. Um, uh, but yeah, um, and this rotates. No, oh, it's fixed. Okay, that rotates. Really nice. Yeah. Okay, so the map is fixed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, it's really Sorry, nice that we kind of get like it's it's nice when we there, finally get you know, set because it's hard to like put the map in the uh, right direction and everything like that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah, this and that. And oh, this, you know, this is, oh, yeah, it was just awesome. Just I was surprised. No, well, we I mean, not uh, you mean like a good map uh -huh. or something like that? Yeah. Well, we have like all sorts of like. Yeah, right. I think we keep them for a while, and this one's probably the tower had not been set up. For a long time. <laughs> this is a very, very useful map. It was made by the guy on Pisga. The, the uh, stairs, Pisga. though? Right, here we go. Check this out. I do think it's telling that. Yeah. Here we go. Up. Going down, down, down. Yeah, Actually, down's a lot easier than going up. Yeah, but these are like, super steep. <laughs> that's, the, that's the solitude light. Pepper, can you check yeah. hey, Holy cow. Yeah. Okay, here's Spite. the first landing. At the least view they're both is still genuine huge. food items. You know, I keep looking True. at those Clorox wipes thinking... Yeah, uh, these stairs are wonderful. That, you guys. The steeper you got, the higher scary. you got up, the Here we go. steeper you going got. Down, 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 down. down. Actually, down's, down's down. a lot easier than going up. But these are super steep. <laughs> because it was more comfortable for me. Really? Because I yeah. felt I was going to face plant. No. <laughs> yeah. I found it easier to go through. I asked the I asked the guy that manned the tower how he went down and he said he goes backwards and I'm like all right that's what I'm doing he's doing yeah. this for a living so I'm doing what Turn he around said. and do it like a ladder. I had yeah, a comment from one well. of our one of our viewers has commented that the guest needs to speak up a little bit louder if you can please. Guest. Yes. Uh, here I can. I'm also... assuming that means everybody but Dylan. Talk louder. There we go. I can also bump you guys up a little bit too. Let's see if that works. Okay. It's kind of like Adam here with the go. radios. Oh, I can't hear you, Adam. And hey, the TH is like, whoa, God, I can't. Whoa. It's like, <laughs> yeah, did you bump that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, now you need to hand off. Go do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would hold the mic against my leg. So when, as soon as I heard somebody talking, I knew whether it was too loud or too quiet, but I knew what was going on and whether I had to. <laughs> do you, or do you tell everybody you're holding the mic against your leg? No. Shh. Shh. Wonder what Sorry. that rubbing sound that was, that like. Somebody's little... got an open mic. <laughs> <laughs> so again, we've got. Uh, well, actually, this is towards the end of the trip of our truck here. But uh, here we go. Here's another fire tower, uh, lookout tower. So this is the blue opus that came with us, looking up. Uh, and I did capture a few of these, and I thought they were a pretty cool image. Um, that would be, say, I think that was, was Kate. Hmm? Go ahead. Sorry, Adam. That was Katie and Michael O'Brien was the ones that had the blue. You know what I think is cool about this picture? Their racks latched. Because we forgot to latch our rack on the way home. Really? Oh, oh yeah. She gets home and she goes, hey, uh, do you have extra pins? Why? I don't think he latched it on the way home. And I go, sure enough, we go outside. Hey. Oh, but you made it. Was it just enough weight it. to keep it closed? There's enough weight, yeah. Trust me. Wow. There's a way enough Get weight. <laughs> I get home, it's like dense in the top. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got. I, we got to find out what opus, what gray they use to paint the trim. Because yes, I scratched it. <laughs> it's got road war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're battle scars. They're stories. You know, to it'll tell. it'll match the. Dent, as I call them, underneath on the water tanks. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot to get video and pictures of that I, when, Good. before you left. Like, ah, shucks. Good, That's there's no point. need to show that off. <laughs> so if you want to hear about that one, check Adam's in my previous live stream where Adam kind of covers what happened to TH's water tanks. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> You're a giver. I know. <laughs> We're all thinking about you. We love you. So, again, he was super accommodating. Here's a picture of me looking through the little spotting scope, trying to, you know, live the life for just a moment see what it's like um, and then looking down on the trucks they just look so small from the way up on that tower and you can see the guy wires there 
Like, it's pretty well reinforced. It's pretty sturdy. You know what I kept thinking to myself? was some poor guy had to dr climb on this thing and drill the holes for those bolts and then insert them and tighten them down, hanging off the side. I just can't imagine if that drill bit catches a knot and just starts to wrap itself around. But if you oh. think about it, if that's the oldest wooden structure, it probably was a hand drill. Oh, God. Right? Think about it. I mean, because... <laughs> It's that old. They probably didn't have an electric drill. They probably hand drilled it and nailed it together. Too not old oldest. Oh, man. Tallest. Tallest, but it might tallest. be that old, and they might not have had power up there. That's a good point when they first built it. They're, it's true. Yeah, they were building it in the 30s. Well, have well to... they, had, they had electric drills. Come on. It's the 30s. We'll have to check the, uh, the, the comments in like a couple of weeks to see if the tower guy has uh, commented whether they drilled them by hand or not. Yeah. He's gonna go, you guys are nuts. We didn't <laughs> <laughs> Why would we do it that way? It's ridiculous. We had a gas power drill. <laughs> that's one of the, that's one of the cool things, one of the places we've gone, which was um Jawbone Siphon Cutoff, which is the California aqueduct that goes along the three ninety five. You can drive you know, it's basically an eighteen foot wide piece of pipe that they dragged up the side of the hill with a couple thousand rivets per section of pipe with a 20 mule team. Oh. So that should be one of our future trips. <laughs> Sorry, I'm throwing that in there because like this old structure, it is very cool to see a gravity driven aqueduct, even though there's no water now. <laughs> so what you mean like a siphon version where gravity pulls it up and over? Yeah, so if you, uh, so what they've done is there's actually, it goes down the side of one side of the valley and comes back up and it's all gravity driven. And at the top of the next hill, there's a grate, so you can look in and see the water rushing by, and that's how they equalize pressure. But it is there's no pumping station. Once it gets started, it goes. Yeah, I've seen those, and those are pretty awesome. Uh, X Country, we're still waiting for her phone to come in the mail. <laughs> so, her phone was left somewhere at the base of this tower, and the guy was nice enough to call me when we were at the Cliffside Camp, which we'll show pictures of here in a little bit, which we discovered when we started Adam started routing it, would have been about nine hours round trip. And through the nastiest section of the entire trip. Um, and here's a picture of the guys in the media crew with this crazy looking like backpack thing that stabilizes camera riding in the back of the truck at like 10 miles an hour to get some footage. These guys would do anything to get the shot. But that thing was crazy where it like came over his head and like a string that, I don't know, it's just a thing with that giant backpack. I guess what is that, a counterweight maybe? Mm -hmm. Stabilizing Probably camera. also... Yeah, it probably also helps take the weight off the camera, so he's not having to hold hold the weight of the camera the whole time. <laughs> That's um, the back of your truck, isn't it? That, yeah, they rode in the back of the truck. I thought they were going to climb in the cab, but I guess I smelled too bad after not showering for a week or something. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, here's a picture Adam took. I believe that you took this with your drone uh, of the cliffside spot we actually stayed at. Uh, there were only a few of us that were – let's see if I can move the – this out of the way so you can actually see the fourth trailer was smart enough to hide over in the bushes over here i wanted to stay out in the open because i was hoping to get some really nice shots uh at nighttime but the moon and the smoke weren't as cooperative as i thought but adam did get this sweet shot um and but we're right on this cliff edge that uh, i believe we have a picture here somewhere that was super steep Let's see if we scroll through maybe it's the next one there we go it kind of shows you the drop off of just how steep this was but joe and the others stayed down lower and their wind was uh, how was the wind down there joe it was fine it was uh, definitely breezy um but we were in the trees a bit i mean we also had like a little bit of a, an option to be uh exposed and closer to the edge but uh, most of us opted to be kind of in the trees and it was really uh fine quite pleasant actually hmm. yeah and you guys yeah, was Go ahead, Adam. It was weird because the uh, all day, like from about eleven o'clock at night till about four o'clock in the afternoon, it was just perfect conditions. I mean, it, it couldn't have been any better. And then, like clockwork, every day at like four four thirty, that wind would come up and blow until eleven o'clock at night, and then it would calm down, and it was uh, almost dead calm through the night and through the morning. So, but yeah, it was. For those few hours in the in the afternoon, late afternoon and evening, it was it was pretty windy up there, but it was worth it to me. I mean, I I love waking up to that every morning. So I'm actually playing a clip that I recorded from inside the trailer when the wind was blowing at about 40, but I'm seeing it now and it's upside down. 
<laughs> but this is, if you can picture this turned over the other way, this is about 30 and it was sustained, or what would we call it? Sustained 30, gusting to 40 kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it was, And you can see, we don't <laughs> have it staked down. I was curious how well it would hold up in the heavy winds not staked down. And ours held up great, just fine, but we were further away from the edge than Adam was. Adam got quite the, uh, we'll call it wind job, um, that one <laughs> evening. It was, uh, def you guys were holding on to straps, and your straps were fluttering almost like they were helicopters. In fact, I, every time I heard it, I kept looking around for a helicopter flying by that. <laughs> but, well, and, and the, the problem was with that with that site is it was there was so much gravel. Normally, because I use those big leg bolts, um, that I can screw in with my drill, but there was so much gravel that I couldn't get a good solid bite in the gravel. Um, the ones I did held really well. There was two the first night that I didn't get on, in all the way, and the wind actually ripped the stakes out of the ground and they flew about 10 feet. Um, but at, the next morning, I got them dug in a little better, and it, it did fine the next day. But yeah, normally if I can get those stakes, those leg bolts in the ground all the way, it's solid. So I was I was pretty impressed with the wind that, that that Opus could take on that ridge. It was pretty impressive. Yeah, but you also had, so uh, you're looking at a picture right now of the Opus light uh, and the our air annex is on the opposite side of this photograph, uh, opposite side of the cliff edge. Adam, his... Um, what is yours? It's not the annex. What do you call it? A canopy? What is yeah, the, well, the, yeah, the air canopy. Air yeah. canopy is actually on the other side, so it's kind of like a wind scoop as it comes up the hill. It's grabbing the underside of the the canopy and pushing up on it. Uh, yeah, like so, a parasail. So, there you go, parasail. And uh, none of you would let me strap it on. <laughs> <laughs> let me go for a ride here. I'm gonna jump here. Hold my beer. Adam won't mind. He, we can re we can fix it. You're not repelling. You're in a wind. We'll pull you back up. Hold the beer. We're gonna be a big human kite. <laughs> I I will say it as well. I think opening up that wall uh, on the side of the trailer made a made a big difference too because the air could flow through the trailer instead of all just getting caught, you know, right up against the trailer and the underside of the canopy. So I think that that made a big difference as well. Yeah, and just opening up. I opened up every window in the trailer, skylights, all the windows, and I think it, I think it definitely helped. Yeah, it was super. The, the temperatures were awesome, though, on the entire trip. I never, I had to put on a sweater at one point. I got and then a beanie, but I was okay once I did that. Um, mm -hmm. It never really got cold, which I was grateful for because we hadn't uh, myself. I hadn't packed for cold temperatures. I actually spent so much time trying, trying to figure out how to use the opus and open it and close it and which you guys can see in another live stream our first attempt at by ourselves opening it up and um yeah i should have packed a little heavier but in the end i was okay actually fortunately because of adam though because the the, the mattress that comes in the opus light is so thin for for somebody like me that doesn't have a lot of padding so thank you for the the, the foam pad and the blanket because that made a world of difference um, and I, you guys, you, Adam and TH, you guys have something, uh, you, uh, some sort of air bed you use. Oh, yeah. 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 So, so that was one of the first upgrades we did. We've got, uh, you're right. Even for a thick guy like me, the foam, <laughs> the foam is kind of soft. So we went to REI and got the X bed air mattresses. So we've got an air mattress on either side. And then on top of that, we put three inch memory foam. So the, X-Ped is nice because it's thin. It self-inflates if you want it to, or you can add air. I know Adam, Adam was pumping and deflating his, but it's insulated. So what that does is if you just use the memory foam, right, if it's really cold because it's sitting on the roof of the Opus, when it's opened up, it gets hard and thin. So this keeps it fluffy and... Like, not... Yeah. And hence yeah, the calisthenics for yeah. closing ours, right? Because we don't have to take it out. So we are actually able to close the Opus with the comforter, the three inch foam and the x pad in it. I just have to roll around the top a little bit and, you know, finally, <laughs> <laughs> it finally closes. But yeah, it's worked out What do out you really use, well. Joe? What do you use, Joe, for your mattress? 
we still have the uh, standard opus mattress uh all we've done is we've added a condensation mat underneath which oh really we live in the pacific northwest is a mucho necessary accessory for the bedding what is that i've yeah. never heard of one of those what is it um, it is, um, I'll have to send you a link if you want to see, I can't, it's kind of hard to describe, but it's basically like this plastic webbing. It's about, I want to say half inch thick and you buy it in big rolls and you cut it to the size that you need and you just shove it underneath your mattress and the sort of the, the, the plastic mesh webbing creates this airspace. Like it's, it's strong enough that it like doesn't compress when you weigh on it with your body weight. Um, it, it still has like some springiness to it. And so it creates airspace so that you don't build condensation in your mattress. So would you say that it's, if it's got some springiness, does it add some padding too then? Not really, not not that much springiness. I, <laughs> I'm just trying to like, uh, I'm trying to, what, yeah, I just want it like, because it is plastic, I don't want you to get the impression that it just like kind of flattens, even though it's like these webby, I don't know how to describe it. I, just, I, have, I have to look up a picture and maybe send you a link. But, we'll just um, live stream. Make sure you subscribe, yeah. hit the bell notification so you get notified when uh, Joe comes back on and shows me. <laughs> yeah, to give you a demo of <laughs> condensation mats. Like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a condensation mat salesman so, now. It makes so you like, the firmer, you like the firmer mattress then? Um, I, I don't hate it. It's, like, clearly not as comfortable as, like, my normal bed. I do, <laughs> I do um, have moments where, like, I kind of i'm like half awake in the middle of the night and i realize that i have like lost circulation in one of my arms oh, yeah. on or something <laughs> like that oh. yeah but uh it's not so bad that i feel miserable funny enough like my little my little sleep tracker thing whenever i'm out camping tells me i have like the most deepest little you know restorative sleeps ever so like i'm, I'm trying to like I, I guess it, I guess I'm fine. I guess um, my wife doesn't mind. Um, she grew up in China and just this is a generalization, obviously, but like beds in China are typically way firmer than what we're used to here in in, in the West. And so, like for her, it's it's pretty okay, and I'm I'm fine with it. Okay, interesting. I've never heard of that stuff before. Like we're yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, another live stream. Got to talk. I want to jump in joe you also had a you also had a really good hose sprayer thing attached to your trailer rig right joe yeah we all like the look of yeah it's um so how did you make that work yeah um <laughs> actually i you know i got this idea from someone else and you know there's a facebook group for opus owners which has been a super valuable resource i mean that's how i got introduced to the brand and introduced to the community and um one of the, like honestly it, it's not about the product itself but it was a selling point in a way because it was just like this vibrant community of people that were like out to help each other I, I guess what i'm trying to say is like i've never been joined a facebook group where there was just like no drama just a lot of like love and helpfulness oh. like I've yeah. never experienced that in any other Facebook group of the office when it was like that. Like, this yeah. place is cool. Um, and I'm, I'm That's pretty cool. sure like Adam and others could attest to that. Um, and so anyways, someone else had posted, and this is, you know, a couple years old now that they had found this neat hack where they bought one of those um, kitchen hand sprayers, you know, like you have your sink faucet and you might have that little hand sprayer on a hose that you pull out to like spray your dishes or whatever. They bought one of those off Amazon and they just... Mm -hmm added to the end of it the little quick connect that you need to plug it into the water outlet on the on the opus and i thought that was so cool i could immediately think of a number of useful re, uh uses for that so uh, we you know we use it to like fill our water bottles we use it to like spray our feet or whatever and it's it's handy we just kind of pull it out whenever we need to quickly wash something where it's where it's you know not convenient to use a sink you just want a hose of some kind um mm -hmm. for for a number of different reasons so yeah that was a neat yeah. little one of our first DIY hacks, if you will, that we did on the Opus. Yeah, we, we did the same thing with ours. We don't use ours that often, but um, when you do when you do need it, it's nice to have to have that because the the uh, kitchen sink, even with the upgraded pumps, which I think are coming standard now with the Opus, but um, with the with the Seaflow pumps. Um, you still don't get a whole lot of pressure um, 
rifle with the with the spray nozzle, it it puts out pretty good pressure. So that is that was definitely a, a useful tidbit of information that you can find on the Facebook group. And there's the the information on that group is almost endless. Like if if there's anything you want to know about that trailer, somebody's messed with it. You know, somebody's changed almost if you if you go through the whole group, you'll find someone that's changed almost almost everything on that trailer at one point in time. Um, some people don't do anything. Some people do a ton of mods. I guess it just depends on, first of all, how much money you can afford to, to do the mods, but also, you know, that, that, that's one thing I like about the Opus trailers. They're, they're super simple to work on. Um, they're not complicated in any way. Um, there it's pretty much cut and dry. Everything's, pretty easy to access so if you do want to change something you can and like with any other rv um on the market if that's something you're living in people people modify their trailers people buy a hundred thousand dollar trailer and they modify it so um yeah that's one thing I, i love about it is if you do need to repair something or upgrade something it's they're super easy to work on if you have a little bit of, of mechanical knowledge and electrical knowledge, but it doesn't take a whole lot. So, uh, Joe just sent me a link to the, this genuine hypervent brand X. I'm going to share that real quick so others can see what it is. Cause I've never seen this before. Um, it just, okay. Holds you up a little bit and allows some, uh, an air gap. Huh? Okay, cool. Well, thanks for sharing. Now I'm a <laughs> learn something new every day. Yeah, we we like the very first time we camped out in our Opus, we tested it out, and definitely like there was some condensation, uh, some some sogginess underneath the mattress after that first night, and we kind of expected it, but we weren't sure how bad it was gonna be, so we tested it out, and so that that's what kind of leaned us towards. We definitely need to get something like this, so that I just didn't want to have to worry about dealing with mold or mildew. Mm -hmm. um packing up the opus with it if the mattress is a little bit soggy underneath um again we live in a slightly more humid environment up here in the pacific northwest um in the seattle area so um it was kind of necessary for us um and i was happy to find that like even after adding that little bit of extra thickness um to the overall bed system it still packs up just fine Hmm. with sleeping bags on top as well i've uh, lost quite a number of um air beds to that moisture not checking it for two or three days sleeping on the ground in november and even in our climate um not that i'm going to use air beds anymore but uh (laughs) it's nice to know there's another product out there um be clear a piece of cardboard in the opus would be better than sleeping on the ground (laughs) oh god yes especially on this rocky cliffside jesus oh my god God, I'm yeah. saying driving a, any kind of stake in was quite the challenge. You just got to find the spot to thread it in between two rocks to drive it down into the, the yeah, view. The was, Go ahead. No, oh, the view was epic though, and the the you know throwing a rock off the edge and listening. You know, how long is it going to take to fall? And it took a long time to hit the bottom. I think that's part of why uh, Joe, you guys stayed down there was the kids, right? Or was it just the wind? Yeah, well, I mean, it was a combo of those two things, honestly. Um, uh, you know, a few years ago, I would have been totally on that on that ledge with y'all because that's exactly the kind of experiences we were seeking out when we first got into overlanding and we bought our rooftop tent and we were trying to explore these these places that are you would normally get to uh, in your normal street vehicle. Um, but yeah, we have a four and a half year old and. That was that was a bit of a, a sharp edge there, and and you know I'm I'm sure it would have been fine, but you take these precautions as a parent, you know, and yeah. you're like let's let's put the kids in a, a little bit of a more safer place, and so um you know we had to bow out of staying out there, which is a bit of a bummer. That was an amazing view you guys had. Um, yeah, except for the wind, the wind, but yeah, yeah, we got a give and take. We came up and saw the sunset. That was nice. We had some yeah sunset. Mm-hmm. And that was really fun having like the whole crew up there watching the beautiful sun drop over the Oregon forest. I still like the look yeah. on Dylan's face when he threw the rock over and something threw it back. <laughs> 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 that makes yeah. sense. 
I, I actually, the void looks all slow into you. I, I didn't, <laughs> out of all the stuff we pro plugged in today, I forgot to actually put in some of the sunset stuff we captured, but another live stream, right? Don't forget to subscribe and the bell notification. There's so you one in here somewhere. Right? No, I saw one with the truck in it. Yeah, that There's was a picture one. Adam took. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I think it was your truck that's in there. Oh, we yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't going to say that. I was just saying it was a picture of the sunset. <laughs> so, this is a picture, I think you took this, Adam, right, of the inside looking out or up at the clouds from yeah. this cliff site. Yeah, that was yeah. a really pretty shot. It turned out really nice. Thanks. Yeah, that that first morning when we woke yeah. up, the clouds were just like, they were just perfect. They were just kind of dotted through the sky. And I remember <laughs> laying in bed in the morning and looking up and, I, and the at, at like first light when the sunrise, all those clouds were pink. Let's um, just be clear, first light for Adam was 11 a.m. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure I was one of the first ones up every morning. Too, every I think morning. Oh, yeah, wait a minute, that was me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, telling on yourself. Here's that picture. No, I, I was usually up by, I think I was, for the most part, out of the trailer about 7 in the morning every morning. And one of the there last was, There was a couple that were 8. Yeah, I I. When I'm out camping, I, I stay up late and I get up early and I pay for it when I get home because I'm exhausted. But I just love, especially in sites like that where you don't get to see that every day. Yeah, um, I wanted to it, soak mm -hmm. as much of it in as yeah, I could. It was so clear. We saw what Hood and Rainier in the distance. So that tells you the smoke was definitely accommodating. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it worked out perfect. So yeah, we yeah. could see Mount Hood was uh, about 150 miles away. I mapped it out in Gaia and just did like a straight line um, from where we were to Mount Hood and it was 150 miles. So you could definitely see a long ways. It was it was weird too how the colors and mountains would kind of disappear during the day. Um, and I don't know if that was just because of the light or whatever, but in the mornings you could you could see Mount Hood super clear and then in the afternoon, all those those far off distant mountains will kind of disappear. And then in the evening, as the sun um, softened up a little bit, they would just reappear again. So that was that was cool to see as well. Yeah, we, I the, the, I did get my first time lapse with the uh, A7C of the clouds going in front of the moon, and it turned out pretty awesome. Which is the way we're going to end this live stream at some point here, but. Um, that was an epic spot for sure. Uh, and then I did have wanted to show this picture of, I was, I was taking a nap and looked out and the film crew was over videotaping, uh, pepper <laughs> cooking. Like, oh, Hey, there's people outside. Uh, but these guys were on it, everything. There was always, mm -hmm. but they were very quick, you know, in a few minutes, can we, this or that? And it was super easy to deal with. And I liked that. Not a like, Hey, we got to get this right now or whatever. There was no pressure and they just captured the yeah. moment so epically and uh, guys, uh, again, the drone pictures you took of my truck, please. Uh, <laughs> you guys were awesome, though. Um, yeah, they were. So, anything else? Yeah, Joe. Hey, I, I, uh, I, I actually, I need to get going. I'm, I'm getting that look from my, uh, my wife that it's dinner time. So I, I probably should bow out here. But I just wanted to say thank you very much for inviting me in and, and, and having this, this call about um, our trip in Opus. It was an awesome trip. It was great to meet you. It was a uh, thank you to Adam for putting it on. And really, like, thanks to the Opus community. It's like, I, I think Adam touched on this already, but it was such an awesome uh, event in large part because the people that went were really great. And uh, it was great to, to hang out with like-minded adventure seekers. And I can't wait to do more of this. And I appreciate, um, yeah, all of these opportunities. Um, and thank you. And um Catch you guys later. Maybe I'll join for a condensation mat call if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Yeah. All right, Joe. Okay. You have a good night. Thank you, Joe. It was you take care. Time. See you. Bye. Let's see. Where were we? So we were talking about the cliffside, and then I just pulled the next picture in our slideshow, which is not terribly well organized. Is the inside of our cab was we had cameras rolling all the time because Pepper and I were capturing uh, with a GoPro, at least one GoPro the entire trip, but. Uh, a lot of the time, this Osmo was just rolling out the front windshield, but also it was there to not only capture something that might happen in front of us, but all the audio going on on the radio traffic. So we have like five or six days of uh, HD footage that's basically just radio traffic. So we came home with over 900 gigabytes of media between the video and the audio and the pictures. So we have a lot to go through. 
and we've had a chance to go through a lot of it, but not even dent what's in there. So I just wanted to pull this up because it kind of shows just a portion of all the cords and cables we had going and splitters. And I think we had three cigarette lighter ports going. And then I also had one of the, a couple of those plugged into external battery packs that would split it off into more directions. So a constant flow of stuff. And then Adam was awesome enough to lend us this uh, iPad here to track via Gaia, uh, which I don't know, I got to admit, I don't have much experience with Onyx, Gaia, and uh, Avenza, but Gaia definitely, that was super easy and awesome. <laughs> like, really nice to have. So thanks, Adam. Appreciate that. Yeah, no, it's that, that I like uh, it's it's it takes a while to learn the system, um, but it's it's pretty user friendly, um, and it's for a trip like this, something that you can download maps, have offline, is invaluable. I mean, it makes it so much easier. I've done the old school way, which I think you, Dylan, do, you still do quite a bit with just reading maps and, and finding the roads and, and following your route with a map. But um, especially with a group like this and being able to to map everything out and have the trail mapped out and mileage um, and being able to watch on the uh, Gaia GPS as you're moving makes it so much easier to make sure you're staying on track and not having to stop and, and take the time to read a map and make sure you're on the right route and the right forest service road. Um, there was, there was a couple times, I think there was once that we really had to stop and Joe and I got out and walked up the road because there was like a, there was like an intersection of like five roads that went all different directions. And um, we wanted to make sure that we were definitely on the right route before we uh, continued on and but other than that, I mean, it, it, it tracked us right where we needed to go the whole way. So it was definitely a big help. Yeah, because there's, a, as I'm looking at this a whole lot, I just turned my audio up because I heard it was low. Now I've got a bit of an echo. I hope it's not on that end too. Um, a lot of roads in this area. Yeah. Uh, just a whole lot of roads. And I believe that what you sent me today via or text is the pre-planned route not what we actually drove right there there's an add-on in there that was a we had to, we did a little bit of a detour turns out we didn't need to um but the forest service was kind enough to um send us a, a quick email when i was communicating with them that said there was one section that we may want to avoid because there was a large mud hole um so we did a detour, um, which worked out fine. I think it added a few miles to our trip, but it wasn't a whole lot. Uh, but it, yeah, talk, we, we ran across a uh, couple guys with Jeeps on the trail later. I think it was later that afternoon after we had finished the detour and they had said that there really wasn't any mud at all. It was basically just a, uh, like a dried up hole a kind of pothole in the ground so we we could have done it but with this many people i and trailers i want to play it on the safe side and make sure that we got through with no problems but so yeah there was a, a little bit of a detour that we had to take but not too bad no what we never got to find out that's okay though there's it was going to be yeah. more opus runs and uh no yeah we, we got plenty of chances to get stuck and you know yeah, have some have some uh, adventure. So there was really only the one spot that we had to get out, and uh, I spotted a bunch of everybody going through. But I think that was pretty much the only time. Oh no, there was another one, but they were branches. They weren't uh, obstacles, other like rocks yeah. or cliffs or anything. So all in all, yeah, was... And there was. Go ahead. There was definitely some spots that were rougher than I thought it would be, um, but like again, I hadn't, I didn't do a pre run on this trip. I just kind of went with what I had found on YouTube and, and searching it that way. But there were spots where we were, we were doing four miles an hour for a few miles and then it slowed us down quite a bit, but mm -hmm. uh, there was also some stuff we were doing 30, 35 on. So it, it kind of even out. But... <laughs> yeah. I think, I think the fastest I got was 33, but um, 
but yeah it was and it was a good mix it was a good mix of kind of some crawling stuff with some rock and little little bit of technical stuff nothing serious but um and then just more some higher speed you know making some making some time up so i think it was a good it was a good overall mix of terrain i, I was pretty happy with the route Oh, I was extremely happy. I wanted more of that rough stuff, to be honest. I was, <laughs> keep it coming, keep it coming. Uh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, so thank you for that, for, for doing it. And, uh, we're going out, I think you're, I told you, Adam, Pepper and I are going out, um, uh, not this weekend, but the following, to go do a pre-run for a spot that we think is a good base camp and then do different runs each day from there and we're hoping it's not burned but we will find out and let everybody know and if so the spot we know is got plenty of room to for everybody to spread out and hopefully we can do another adventure uh, closer to our home <laughs> to go pretty far i think we almost hit 1600 miles uh, round trip that was a long way but yeah worth every mile by far Lightweight. not that we were even close to being the people from the greatest distance away or the people on the longest trip one no, of the fascinating true. aspects was that there was a family who had been on the road for six weeks before they even showed up for their <laughs> trip they're just spending the whole summer in their opus on the road two kids mom and dad just yeah wheeling and it up th is and a then lot there was, further of south a couple than us from washington mm -hmm. yeah yeah you had a fun drive quite the drive so in how my, many yeah. miles how many miles did you have to travel th you i know? think mine ended up 2200 and that was partially because oh. the the fire detour i mean what you know we were talking about the 395 coming home with five fires going on and the uh tamarack fire merging when they closed the 395 that added an extra 200 miles to the trip oh wow plus the air filter you know nothing nothing like a jet black ash covered air filter in the middle of nowhere <laughs> yeah 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 it was definitely when you pulled it out that night on the or that afternoon whatever it was on the when we were staying at that cliffside site it was it was looking a little a little rough i now i now carry two extra spares just in case the guy was trying to say well you need the cleaner uh -uh, i'm not cleaning it on the trail i'm just swapping it i'll clean it yeah. when i get home so but yeah you run a k and n yeah the k and n okay the That's, cold air that would explain the cleaner but, you know, usually with the snorkel on the truck, I'm above the dust, so I don't usually have that problem. But, you know, as we all saw, it was like driving through a Scooby-Doo mystery machine movie because <laughs> yeah. I was just in, encased in a cloud of dust and it didn't help. Well, and that, yeah, that trail, there was, we hardly had any breeze at all. And there was a lot of the trail that the, the trees were just right up against the side of the trail and they were pretty heavy trees. And there was a lot of that fine silt kind of moon dust stuff. And man, when what I know being in the lead, um, looking in the mirror and I couldn't see anything like you guys just totally disappeared. And I'm like, that, that looks a little rough. I hope they back off a little bit, <laughs> but yeah, we back the problem off. is you'd have to back up so far that you'd be, you know, you'd really have to be, I don't know, probably a mile away from the next person before that uh, dust I actually settles. So. We backed off. I think we were probably 300 yards, maybe, off of yeah. stuff. I know the Black Elk guys probably weren't happy that we were hanging back that far, but I got better pictures of my truck that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wasn't True. stupid. <laughs> but, no. No, but you know, we had the dog out the top of the sunroof and the windows open, so all that dust just came right in. It was awesome. Yeah, no, the whole trip was awesome. Um, so, the next picture I've got up here is these painted rocks. Uh, one other spot that Adam had pre-scouted for us to go check out was this. Well, actually, so they're not really rocks. It's like painted hills. Uh, yeah. That was really interesting to see. Painted the, hills is what it's called, right? Oh, yeah. There you go. I mispronounced. So the, the reds, the tans, the browns, the, the blacks. It was pretty, really awesome. And to spend the... We were there till almost sunset to uh, watch the shadows coming across all these different little valleys and whatnot. Um was pretty awesome so it was non-stop uh, adventure new locations and epic places to see um it was i think we stayed what five locations or was it six six uh, six, six for us over yeah. the course of eight days for us um, yeah yeah and 
it was super easy to break down camp, unlike uh, you know a tent and all this other stuff. Uh, or even our box trailer where we just throw everything in and go. The Opus was still a lot easier, but going and seeing this many locations in that short of time was just so much fun. Um, mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like this before. Um, and of course, this well, isn't our cherryest picture either. The It was the difference in landscapes from the time we left, like for us and you guys similar, like leaving the Bay Area and, and that that California area going from that to mountains to some of the, like the alkali lake that we went through um oh, it's yeah. almost desertous i mean it was just i don't know how many different kinds of landscapes we saw in in 1300 miles so yeah it was it was a really cool mix i forgot about that lake there was like uh, all yeah. salt but the, it looked like salt because it was white. lake but there was uh even more uh colors out there too than i expected there was there was like mm -hmm. some uh interesting stuff but then also to see the dust devils off in the distance was in the shades of white mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah there was a little bit of red and some pink in there and yeah that was an interesting landscape i didn't i don't think i got any pictures of that which i looking back i really wish i would have stopped somewhere and got we were on kind of a hard burn to get up to idlewild campground at that point but I really wish I would have had some time to be able to stop and, and fly the drone or uh, get some pictures of some of that, that alkali bed because that was, that was pretty cool in some spots. I know somebody that had a, uh, an Osmo action rolling during that drive, especially with the grasshoppers oh. too. <laughs> so Very good. We have some video of the Opus, dri Opus trailers driving through that Goose Lake area and the grasshoppers that we hit that sounded like small birds when we hit the car. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Research was, Nerd did was... some, uh, we, that was the Goose Lake State Recreation Area we were driving through. And Goose Lake is a seasonal lake, but it's not salt or alkali or anything like that. So apparently in spring, it's, you know, like a marshy wetland. What? And then oh, okay. what it empties out stuff? over the course of the summer. Yeah, is that, is that where... it's just mineral content, soil. So it's not like Owens Lake. Yeah, the, the mucky like soil underneath gets. Huh. Interesting. It's, it's Interesting. Water. That's I just bet. residual I gotta mineral content. I got to take a quick break, yeah. Dylan. I'll be right back. Yeah, no worries. Sounds good. Um, I would have bet money that that was, uh, <laughs> that was salt. I've never seen the white of any other kind of minerals. Um, Tish, you got any other comments you want to throw in? I mean, not yeah, we can talk about Adam while he's gone. Oh, okay, <laughs> so yeah, we can't hear because it's all coming through his earbud. Although Charmaine might be watching the live stream somewhere else in the house. So that's that's true. Get back in there. <laughs> I saw the question. There was one question in the chat window talking about what elevation we're camping at. I think wasn't most yeah. of the time we were at about fifty-seven, six thousand feet. Mm -hmm. That'd be about right. Yeah, yeah, that was about the right range. Um, I believe that the very the cliffside site was. 60 something 6700 or something like that yeah. so i I'm put in about 6500 i'm surprised you didn't show any videos of the drone combat from night number two. Oh, like i said <laughs> we've gotten so much <laughs> video to go through it's it's it was it, it was it took us all day to set this up and it, we still had a whole lot of content we could have thrown in here um but yeah we'll uh, did, we did capture that we, we'll publish it we'll use it great uh, did you play that video of us hitching up the trailer? No, we can do that here. So probably wait for yeah, Adam because he or, or TH has the, the new hitch, right? I'm back. No, not, I haven't installed it yet. That's that's all this weekend. Okay, so okay. Adam, we were gonna. I have a little bit of video of looking at the hitch and the underside of the. Uh, Your undercarriage. It? Yeah, we're going <laughs> upstairs inside wind camera. Uh, oh, hitch. Here we go. Hitching is the one of us hitching it up. Well, I don't know what portion of this video is playing on, but here you can see the articulation. That, uh, it, the, the hitch will rotate from the track 360 and then will pivot from the trailer almost 90 up and down uh, and left and right. This isn't as bumpy as I'd like, but I'm going out this weekend to try this. Uh, Indian Valley Reservoir where I'm going to try and put the uh, the hitch to the test, go over some rocks and some transitions, go through a creek crossing or two, and see if I get some better video of it flexing in these different directions. So uh, stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe. Is that the lock and roll? Adam, is this the lock and roll? 
This is, is that on your roll. trailer? Or is yeah, that... it's on ours. Yeah, that's the lock and roll, yeah. That's on the OP light. Yeah. So tell us about the other one. So the the other hitch Adam, that Opus is um, working with and going to be using and will be available is the DO35 Cruise Master hitch. Um, I don't think I have any pictures of it. Um, I know the film crew um, has some uh, footage of me uh, operating the hitch and uh, showing how it disconnects from the truck. So there'll be there'll be some footage coming out from them on basically how it works. Um, it's it's very similar to the lock and roll hitch. Here you go. As I'm far as to... articulation. It will it will do everything the lock and roll hitch does, but it's um, just a different just a different system. Um, they're both very good hitches. Um, I, I didn't have any real issues with the with the lock and roll. I just I kind of my preference I like the design of the of the Do thirty five a little better. But all sealed, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, it's all... a sealed system. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. What Dylan's showing there is is kind of how it works. It's it's hard. It's a hard system to kind of explain. But it basically does the same thing as a lock and roll. Um, you've got articulation every which way possible. It looks like you've got so a pivot there's point no... here, another pivot point over here. But then also it looks like the pin goes into a ball mount, like for what you'd find for a regular uh, trailer hitch. And that's another it does. swing so it's, point. Yeah, so the, uh, on that kind of the top left picture, there's kind of a, the, that's your ball uh, right in the kind of the bottom right corner of that little thumbnail that's up there. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks almost like a finger sticking up, but it's got a little notch. And when you drop the, the um, tongue of the trailer down over top, it, it drops through the hole in the center of that hitch and then all you do is you just hit a little red button and this this silver plate is spring loading it and it slides back and it grabs that the notches in that um in the actual hitch ball i guess you would call it of the truck and locks on and then it's got a dust cap that goes over top and it's locked in one of the things i really like the most about it um is on the front of the on the very front of the hitch there's kind of a yellow uh, high vis sticker right here. So when you're backing up, if you have a, a backup camera, you can you can really see that that uh, yellow sticker on the front of the hitch. So you know when you're when you're backing into it that it's centered on your on your hitch, which makes a big difference. So yeah, yeah I'm I'm super happy with that hitch. What I also like caught it. my uh, attention was when you were hitching up. This uh, dust cover does not go on unless it's connected properly mm -hmm. which i thought was pretty cool because then you know because when, when i hit when i watched you hitch it up i'm like well how do you really know that's hooked up well the dust cover simply doesn't go on um but you right. have just as much articulation if not more than the lock and roll that we have on the opus light it almost looks like you have more uh well, I think it the could be one, right? i think I I mean, you're going to be, you're going to be limited to, I mean, it's especially as far as uh, the angle of your truck to your trailer, you're going to be limited just because of your rack in the front. So oh, yeah, where the propane and the water goes. Yeah. You're going to hit that on the back of your truck before the hitch actually bottoms out. Or over so you have, that is one thing you have to be careful about is the hitch might do it, but your angle itself of the of the truck and trailer might not do it so you have to be kind of cognizant of that that you don't <laughs> smash your racks into the back of your truck uh, but so. this hits just like the lock and roll does have a greasable bushing that needs to be lubed but so they not as often not as often but they do both have to be lubed uh, within some sort of serviceable inter interval yeah yeah okay. i know i know with mine i the That's lock and roll i was i was mind. lubing it every trip yeah, and I was Probably doing that too as well. Notice with the lock also and this picture here says version retired. So, like a lot of these products, they're obviously 
constantly upgrading and revising things. So that's always interesting mm -hmm. too. Does anybody want to answer the question about mud flaps at the front of the trailer? So those. Um, what is the purpose those, of the mud flaps up front? Basically, what those are doing is is any rocks because most people that have these trailers are running like an all terrain tire with a with a wide tread. Um, so you're catching a lot of rocks in your tread. They're basically to help prevent rock chips on the undercarriage of the trailer, even on the side, it can help with rocks deflecting off the mud flaps. That's why they put those on the front. I know every time I off road with the truck and trailer, it takes me a good two or three days for all the rocks to get out of my tires because there's so many rocks stuck up in the tread, those little guys that get stuck up in there. Um, and I notice it as soon as I get on the highway and I get up to speed, there's rocks. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, you can I'm hear sure there's one grasshoppers. Yeah, <laughs> no, Birds. they're definitely rocks, and they they do they do uh, get thrown around. But that's why they that's why they put the mud flaps on the front because it does cut down on the um, rock chips. They also yeah. have the netting in the front too, which in this picture yeah, isn't which the is the greatest to see. But there's a netting in the front to catch debris from hitting and puncturing your. Uh, water jerry cans or fuel cans uh, or your propane tanks and and to prevent the the paint from getting chipped on the trailer as well from the rock to keep it all pretty mm -hmm. for guys like me that like yep. the pretty rides yeah waxing their windows even in the woods somebody else yeah somebody on the trip showed me how there's even the netting protective part was in from the edge of the front trailer face and those strips that were exposed had a ton of damage that the rest of the trailer was protected from yeah. that front panel. So Yeah, and I, I think yeah. they've changed that They're now. Have... I, I could be wrong. I think they've widened that rack because mine on my OP2 right. comes flush with the side of the trailer. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I think I think that's what they're doing now. But, yeah, it, it definitely makes a difference when you're doing gravel roads for, you know, hundreds of miles it over time it as much mm -hmm. protection as you can get on the front of that trailer makes a difference yeah when you're doing roads like this with this <laughs> lots of rocks and big mud trains that's one thing we don't have too big an issue with the highway terrains is they don't pick up many rocks not to say yeah. that i encourage using them because we are going to be switching to an all-terrain um but definitely being able to dent and ding I mean, if you look at the front of our uh, box trailer it has thousands of little tiny dents from rocks being kicked up and hit in the front of the trailer. Um, so, uh, I mean, it would be nice if we had mud flaps on the truck itself, but they didn't come standard, so it's not my fault. What am I supposed to do? Oops. So, um, let's go back here to Zoom call. So, um, Hitch, we were showing some of this. The other thing we, I believe we have here is some under the trailer video, which I wasn't terribly thrilled with. The camera kind of rattled around a bit. You can see the suspension moving and kind of taking a lot of your um, yeah. He still didn't actually play the video about pitching it up. It has to keep playing. playing the video of it rolling, right? You can't rewind it. No, that's the start of the video, I guess. Oh, I thought I made two separate you, ones. When you did the editing, you put in there. Okay. Um, so you were hanging on the bottom of the trailer. Oh, okay. Yeah, for this under the trailer video, I was holding on to like Superman like I do on the Superman videos. That's going to be that's going to be super interesting to see because I've always wanted to watch the hitch in action and I, I wish. I could have got more of the DO35 hitch in action on this trip because it's it's amazing what that hitch is doing back there and you don't even realize it. Yeah, um, well, we're going to get some good stuff. I have a GoPro yeah. mount that's on the bottom end of the trailer facing the back of the hitch, so it's facing the back of the truck. And then I'm going to put a better camera underneath here so it's not as rapid, it's a lot clearer to show the... You can see how the camera's labeling, but I've got a better setup on the new Stay tuned for that one. I'm really curious. I want to see the 
these trailing A arms and stuff, like how much they actually move as they go over stuff. Um, yeah, that's super cool. Don't bend your water tanks. <laughs> why would you say that? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea why I would bring that up. No idea. Hey, but you're still holding water. That might actually still work if I. <laughs> I was impressed. Okay, I lowered the volume on the, uh, the video of underneath the trailer. We definitely don't need to be hearing that. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what it's like underneath from a better camera that's more secured, which we will be doing. Uh, and also multiple angles. I plan to drive over, not literally under the tires, but plant cameras I will drive over, a camera underneath, a camera facing the hitch, probably the drone up in the air, and then another camera getting the overall scene. Um, I, my son won't be ter or our son won't be terribly happy about that, but he, he'll be all right. I'll take him out riding for the day and buy him some extra dessert for afterwards, and he'll be happy. Um, but I'm, that's one of the things that I have yet to see out there looking around is undercarriage footage and hitch footage. of. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen guys hooking up the hitches. There is footage of that out there on YouTube, but none of right. it actually moving and articulating. You can see still images. Uh, I've seen yeah. a lot of those, but I haven't seen anything of it actually rolling and twisting. And so, yeah, I'm going to do my best to send it over the worst of the train I can possibly find. Well, and I know you guys already talked about it last time, but that's how I got the dents, right? It slid off the side of a cliff face at probably a 40 degree angle and it held. The truck didn't like it, but, you know, the hitch did what it was supposed to. Yeah. Yeah, it held. Yeah, on. And, uh, if it was, a, if that was a normal hitch you probably the the trailer would have either come disconnected or yep. would have tipped the truck over yeah yeah mm -hmm. that would have been no part of good so having the the lock and roll or the do 35 huge advantage um, yeah i'll be curious myself at some point uh, when i we get another opus <clears throat> hint hint opus um that we can try out that way we can compare the two hitches and see what they're are like. you gonna jump it jump it <laughs> well, we, i'm gonna know, send like I'm going to do my best to test it, but I'm not going to destroy it. But I'm also not going to be near any cliff edges, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm but like the, video, like the video they got when we were on the trip, I got a pretty – not. I didn't get a lot of air, but I gave it a good hefty oh, I'm a, of that it, hill. It's going to get sent. <laughs> it's going to get sent. Like I said, where I'm taking it, I've been going every year for about 15 years. Other year. So I know how to hit all the trails just right. Uh, and then there'll be at least one river crossing, and then there's a, a rocky terrain to go down to a riverside camp that should make some pretty. It's going to be the best I can get around here, but I'm going to be by myself with my son. But I, we're going to stay tuned. <laughs> we'll get some good stuff for sure. Um, and I know other people are going to want to see it too. And maybe do it as I'm watching this, maybe a camera from the back facing forward might be kind of neat. Get some different angles to see it just in action of twisting and turning and whatnot. It'll be a lot of fun. Although what I'm going it's, over it, won't be fast. It'll be slow. It's interesting to me watching this video, um, even though it's not rough terrain or, or any real big rocks, that when it does hit a bump, it's really cool to see just one tire go boop yeah. and come back down. And not the whole trailer doing this, you yeah. know, or bouncing. Like our leaf spring just, trailer is just... Yeah, it's just super solid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you'll see some stuff uh, hopefully... By next week, I'll have some short clips up there um, of it uh, actually going over bigger rocks. But again, I'm not going to be mm. going 50 miles an hour because they're going to be super steep. But I'll find the biggest rocks to send it over. We'll send it through the river. I, I even thought about putting a camera in the water and driving over it too. That's an angle I haven't seen anybody do yet either. <laughs> so let's just keep doing. Uh, Melanie, yes, we did have a great trip. Uh, the baffles did work well. I'm not sure. Glad the baffles worked well for you. Um, which baffles? I'm missing that point. Forgive me. Because I'm missing something obvious. I don't know if you guys know which baffles. Uh, um, I would not see the wind baffles. The wind. Oh, okay. Wind brakes. Did you get a chance to use those at all or exercise them? We have a picture of it somewhere here. It's set up. Uh, yeah, I, I tried them on that um, when our last two nights when we were uh, down in the Modoc. Um, and they definitely had their use case. I can see where um, in this in the circumstance where the wind is coming in um, basically down the side of your trailer. So it'd be like parallel to your trailer uh, and you're 
trying to cook dinner on your stove or something, I could definitely see, or even some like almost driving rain. I could see where it almost kind of turns it into a annex. Um, oh. It does require a little extra setup. Um, but the annex. Okay, now I understand. So she's talking about the live stream we did where we set up the trailer before we even oh. left on the trip. Um, we did use the uh, the doorways to reduce wind. Mm, fantastic. We also used them to uh, to reduce uh, the sun was coming in uh, from when it would get low in the evening or in the morning. Worked fantastic. Absolutely love the annex. Um, I can see a, the, uh, a place for both the annex and the canopy like Adam has where we can zip doors closed and have a floor, uh, but also Adam having a bigger, grander space to actually be out in the open but not have the walls, but he can use the wind breaks. Um, so I see a place for both. It'd be hard to decide, but personally, <coughs> for my needs and my uses, I would lean towards the annex. Um, I don't know the price difference though, so that's not an influence in that decision. Um, mm -hmm. but uh, I like being able to close it in. I don't know that I'd ever use the floor, but the walls, I can definitely see myself getting into some, uh, wet, wind and rain where I put those up. Absolutely. Um, Chelsea, if you're watching, I still need that air bladder though. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, at some point. Yeah. I think it. there's a, I think there's a use case for, for all the, the options that Opus has. Um, it just depends on what kind of conditions you camp in, how often you move. Um, I do know that for, if you're doing one day at a time um, and you're just on the move all the time, I would go straight just trailer um, and really nothing else. Um, we left our awning attached for this trip. Um, and it was, it was super nice because we were also doing, you know, one or two days in a row where we were just moving and then we would stay for two days. So for us, it was worth it just to leave the, the awning attached. But if I would say, if I was going from California to uh, Montana or whatever, and you were doing one night stays every night, I think I would probably take the awning off if the conditions are good, just because it, it speeds up pack down, speeds up um, opening up the trailer. But most of the time you're staying at, at one site for at least two or three days. So mm -hmm. it's worth it to me to have that extra sun protection and wind protection and um, yeah. just protection of stuff, debris and everything falling on your stove and all over your cooler. If you're staying under pine trees, it's nice to have that, that protection over top. So it's not dropping sap on your mm -hmm. stove and your fridge and all that. So, yeah, I think the, I think, I really like the air canopy. There's people that love the, the full on annex. Um, it just kind of depends on your, your preferred way of camping, I guess. And that extra living space of the annex is, is really cool as well. So Melanie, we did leave the annex attached when we were putting the trailer away, uh, but we did not put it away with any of the walls on it yet because we're still learning the trailer and it's on loan to us. So we don't want to damage it. Uh, I do really uh, want to know if I could leave all uh, four openings zipped closed and put it all in the trailer and close it up. I mm -hmm. likely can. Uh, Chelsea said it will fit. But again, we're we're trying not to push the limits too hard because, again, this is on loan to us. Uh, we don't personally own this trailer, and I don't want to return it all. You know, oh, well, <laughs> sorry, your lid's bent. <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. um, at some Whoops. point, we will find out um, because we will. Adam's been showing us, you know, uh, Francisco at the factory showed us about packing it up, and then Adam showed me some more tr tips and tricks as we were packing up from that lakeside. So we will be trying new things and seeing what fits and what's not, what doesn't. So please stay tuned because uh, as we learn, we're going to be sharing the information. Uh, that's the kind of the, the 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 purpose of us borrowing the uh, the uh, let's see here. I got sidetracked by that. Um, the purpose of us being lent the trailer is to help get more content out there and to help people uh, better understand how to use what's what modifications have been done, uh, improvements and whatnot. So please stay tuned. Um, that hitch was video over. Um, Matt, I need to bow out. Okay. It's been fun. 
Thanks, guys. Looking forward to the next one. Thank you. We're, we're Let's definitely see your faces. Good. Good to see Give you. Lisa a big hug for me. I will. Thanks, guys. All right, TH. All right. Thank Adam, you. take care. Bye. Bye, guys. Talk to you later. So we've uh, covered most of the stuff that we've got plugged. Uh, Adam, I'm not sure what else you want to add other than... Uh, plan. Huh? Plan, yeah. We've gotten through all the stuff we had planned. Yes, uh, it's worked oh, out well. Yeah. I do look forward to doing another outing. Uh, I, look, I hope we can do more live streams where we can uh, help people out and understand things and answer some questions. So uh, I hope we can make that work for, um, you know, does the annex fit inside the office light? Uh, once we've had a chance to use it with all the poles, you know, what is our thoughts on that one? Um, your experience with the wind baffles or the wind breaks, what are they calling those? Wind, wind breaks, I believe is what they're calling them. So your experience yeah. with the wind breaks um, uh, and the hitch and whatnot, and then also bringing some video footage of uh, the suspension in action, the hitches in action and so on and so forth. And um, I do plan to start doing this more often. I don't know about a regular basis, but we will see and stay tuned. So if you're watching again, I'm gonna plug it, subscribe, bell notification. Uh, we did launch, was it last night? Our first edit of uh, relaxing in the Opus and how easy it was by that lakeside. So we will be having some Opus content coming out. Um, but with that, I'm gonna say, Adam, what else would you like to add or see or strive for us to do? Um, I, I think that what you guys have planned is great. I plan on meeting up with, with you, Dylan, as well. Um, hopefully we can do it while you have the light. We can kind of, it'd be kind of fun to do um, some stuff on both trailers, you know, whether it's the, the OP light or the OP2, um, the lock and roll hitch, the DO35 hitch, um, because each trailer has their own unique features. Mm -hmm. um, even though they're kind of the same, they're similar, um, they all have different features. And that's what's cool about Opus is they can, they have different models um, and they all have their advantages um, that another model doesn't have. It's, it it kind of depends on what, what works best for a family. So it'd be interesting to have kind of the OP2 and the OP light mm -hmm. next to each other, which are kind of, I guess it's almost brother and sister because mm -hmm. it is a one lid mm -hmm. opening mm -hmm. um, instead of the two lid, which is the OP4. Mm -hmm. So, um, but there are differences between the light and the two um and we can we can talk about you know cargo capacity and and um just what you can haul in the op light mm -hmm. compared to the op2 uh those sort of things so yeah i think i think we can get some really good stuff mm -hmm. yeah to help people uh better uh understand the features and differences between them to better know what which trailer model would suit them whether it's the Opus Light for they call it the Weekend Warrior. Well, I think you could do more than just a weekend with that. It's all well. What you, you proved need. that. Yeah, we you did. definitely proved that. We did. Although it would be nice to have a shower, but we did have a water pump and a way of taking a shower other than your trailer. So in theory, yeah, yeah you could take the Opus Light out for a lot longer than being a Weekend Warrior. But that's one of the things I'm going to strive for. Is even though we have the Opus Light that is a prototype, still trying to just bring you content that's neutrally. Uh, uh, conceived or given to you not just oh well this is a negative or a positive well this is just what we have uh you can you know you can take it as a negative or a positive would you modify it or would you go to the opus 2 or the opus light or the opus 4 uh or the opus 15 which is a whole nother ball game <laughs> so right. or ball of wax um but yeah that'll be what i would like to do would be some more outings with you since we're not that far apart there are places we could meet up and do some comparisons but also bring content that's not just like, well, how many views can I get with this piece of video? Um, let's bring yeah. some genuine content that like, okay, well, here it's all, you know. I do plan to do a setup, a full setup video where it's, you know, I, I, leveling it out, our tips, the ways that we've found it easier to make it level. Because I think by the end of the trip, Pepper and I were, had it pretty well down on leveling the thing we did. out, figuring out how many blocks we needed without even using a level. We had that down really good. I'd like to put, share that kind of stuff. Um, and how to set up the trailer and and so on and so forth. But I want to dig deeper. I want to show how the suspension works, how the hitch works, so you can decide mm -hmm. what works better for you. But also, 
as somebody who's uh, an ex car mechanic, uh, really, I'm curious about how everything works. So I want to bring yeah. the most diverse content we can. And like you were saying, the Opus Two and the o- Opus Light are are like the bigger brother and younger sister, or however you want to phrase that, with the single lid that opens the one way. Um, how much can we fit in there? We did discover that we were able to fit a couple of blankets and Pepper's uh, clothing backpack inside there with the annex. So yeah, uh, lots of content to come. I'm very excited. But again, we are pretty likely to start a second channel just for the Opus content because uh, Bluebeard Adventures is is more of dispersed camping. Uh, Opus is dispersed camping, but we want to bring a lot of Opus content. And I don't want to lose subscribers because of that. So stay tuned and uh, we'll make that happen. But uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm excited to see what we can get out there. Uh, and if anybody has any suggestions, hit me up on Facebook. You know, what, what kind of camera angles do you want to see? I'm, I'm always looking for new stuff and trying new stuff. But, um, yeah. Pepper, do you got any thoughts you want to add? Pepper? Uh, I guess just an overall thought on, can you hear me? Yes. Am I not coming mm-hmm. through? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, my overall thoughts on the Opus after all that time we spent in it and looking at all the other different ones is that, um, well... Uh-oh. It's Ooh. just like shopping for a car or a house. There's no one model that's perfect. No more sound? Uh, you're, not, you're good now. You broke up for a second, but you're good. Go ahead. Overall, overall it's a, just a really good price point for a lot of utility in a package that's very towable, easy to work with, and I just cannot wait to explore all the little ins and outs between all the different models with that honest perspective. like I don't think Opus or anyone expects anything to be perfect but with these different adaptations and mods and uh, finding the right model it's such a great solution to this price point i'm super impressed look forward to more uh adam I'm yeah that, that Go ahead. that's what's interesting about the way they the way they set their trailers up is there's there's a a good use case for every type of of price point the size of your family um so yeah, that they're they're a great brand, Fair. and I do want to say thank you to Opus for helping us with this trip um, and providing all the uh, giveaways and the the media crew. Um, they went above and beyond. So thank you, thank you to the Opus company for yeah, helping we, on this. We wouldn't have been able to go <laughs> if they Absolutely. didn't. Yeah, if they didn't, if they weren't able to step in and get us a trailer. Um, the other thing that I think that we should try and And get... for anyone who cares one more Go ahead. Go ahead. one more thing I wanted to just drop into the conversation. For those of us who care very much about where things are made and how they're made and how the people who make them get treated, we had first hand experience of the people who are in this warehouse here in California using all these different components from all over the place and crafting them and assembling them and fabricating them into the product that is the opus. They like working for opus they have a really great sense of teamwork and they treat their employees really well just top notch the other thing i wanted to bring up adam i think we should strive to some content that would be good is to find some people that have made modifications uh to try and share some of that stuff like that you know the hose joe was talking about that's kind of on the minor end but you know have guys uh, Mm -hmm. hooked in their own inverters added more batteries um those kinds of things i'd be really curious to see what they've done with their trailers to make them better fit their specific needs and wants and uh and necessities so that would be good to maybe have uh let me plant that seed in your brain to kind of think about who who's done some heavy yeah. mods or what kinds of mods let's see if we can get them on the show and talk about what they've done to further other people's minds about oh i didn't know you could do that didn't know we could do this well this is how you do it here you go so i'd like to plant that seed before we go also um yeah and i I also think that um for some people they're a little bit hesitant to do some mods to their trailer i know i've helped a few um kind of walk them through some of the stuff that i've done and actually once you once you just dig into it and you know just kind of go for it you realize that most of the stuff um, that people are doing is not that difficult to do. It just takes um, a little bit of knowledge. And that's another great thing about the uh, Opus community is 
everybody's willing to help everybody. Mm -hmm. So if, if someone's done a mod and someone else isn't confident on how to do it, there's always someone that's willing to walk you through it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Or maybe help but you. Yeah, find that's definitely something we can, can do. Help you do it. There's yeah. gotta be a, a, a way, but at least knowing what options might be out there or modifications, I think it'd be good. So again, seed planted. Um, mm -hmm. So again, I, I just as I keep doing these live streams and using the opus and moving it around, like today I had to move it in my driveway and I was able to do it by myself without even hitching it to the truck. I'm thinking of more stuff that I want to bring out to everybody. So to, again, subscribe, bell notification. <laughs> I'll keep plugging that. Um, with that, I think you guys feeling pretty satisfied here okay yeah well then, i think uh, it i yeah. think it went well oh i wanted to show this one off adam uh check this one out so i got i did get this with the game camera i managed to get this little guy eating some food and then i walk over and was i didn't notice but i'm like brushing my teeth by the opus like, oh that's kind of a cool shot look at that so we got some cool little candid shots not just underneath the trailer and whatnot so that'll be fun to share um, the last one I would say would be to just share this little goodbye for everybody. And then, uh, Adam and Pepper, if you just hold on for a second, it'd be great. Uh, but otherwise I'm going to say, this is going to be our farewell shot, uh, if you will, um, and say good evening or good afternoon, good evening, good night, and see you in the next one. Thanks for joining goodbye, us. Everybody.